So how does a state know when there's a city issue versus a state issue? If you have home rule, the city could rule itself. Then when can the state, you know, interfere into its matters? When does the state stick its nose into what the city is doing? What is the city actually allowed to do? What is the state actually allowed to do? So this, the, there, this gives us a little bit of an idea here. So this is at jasonstillwell.com. So the powers of a chartered municipality are part of the constitutional powers granted to the home rule city by the people. So the powers of a chartered municipality is part of the constitutional powers granted. So that's the powers, the powers of a chartered municipality. And the reason why we know that home rule has power is because of a court case called Pueblo Aircraft Service Incorporated versus the City of Pueblo, 1980. There was the City of Pueblo owned the airport. They were renting to three different uh, contractors and then... Uh, they switched contractors from one group to another group, and then the group felt like it was a monopoly, and so he, they filed a lawsuit, antitrust lawsuit, a federal lawsuit, an antitrust law, federal lawsuit, and they essentially had immunity. They argued immunity because of a home rule city, and then there were some state statutes that allowed the city Pueblo to essentially you know, decide its own airport's fate. So, the Home Rule Charter is another opportunity for a town to control its planning process. A mature city might use it to tailor their service delivery because Home Rule allows you to work with some organizational features. Growing cities can use it more as an opportunity to create a framework. So, I think, you know, that's a good way to look at it. Here's a framework for how our city is going to develop. Um, I like the idea of Home Rule. I, I love the idea of Home Rule. So one of the primary powers is local land control. So for local concerns, local land control. That's something that local municipalities get to control, the land. And how do we know that? Well, the Frick, some author in Frick was referenced, Vista Village v. City of Boulder, and then Boulder Builders versus the City of Boulder. So there's two court cases right there. How do we know the city gets to control the land? Well, Vista Village of versus City of Boulder, and Boulder Builders versus the City of Boulder. Uh, the Colorado courts have repeatedly held zoning is a matter of local concern. The authority to zone and regulate land use within a home rule city or town derives from the municipality's own charter and where there is conflict between a state statute and a home rule charter ordinance on this subject, the latter controls. So, where there's a conflict between the state zoning laws and the city zoning laws, the city zoning laws reign supreme. Home rule municipalities have broad condemnation powers granted to them directly, granted directly to them by Article 20, Section 1. So they can condemnation, they can condemn properties, which they uh, can exercise within or outside municipal boundaries as long as it is for an authorized purpose. This is interesting. Within or outside municipal boundaries, so you can get condemn properties outside of municipal boundaries. How far outside of municipal, bound municipal boundaries can you... I mean, that seems to be... And condemnation powers, you know, condemnation of public property, but what condemnation of any property? We get, you know, condemnation of public property. We got a court case here, City of Thornton versus Frico, or F R I C O, 1978. So we got zoning. Zoning is for the City of Pueblo. The City of Pueblo can control its own land use and it can condemn property. It can condemn public property. It can condemn property inside and outside, apparently, the municipal boundaries. The uh, local land, you know, use, control, that's important. That's important. The city owns the city's land and apparently some things outside of the municipality. The courts have established a number of areas to be of local concern for home rule municipalities. These include mun municipal courts. Okay, so pay attention to this. This is, this is the difference between local versus state. These are the court cases that have determined these are the things that are of local interest. Not just land, not just zoning, and some taxes too, but these are municipal courts. Municipal courts is all about the city of Pueblo. How's our municipal court doing? It's the city of Pueblo. 
It has nothing to do with the state. State can't talk to us about the municipal court. Municipal court is specifically designed for the city of Pueblo. And I think that would be an important look. Uh, People x Rio McQuaid, 1932, and then Hardeman v. Municipal Court, 1972. So I think that's important because the uh, strange mayor, it is uh, like a municipal court. It's a local thing. How, how could a charter convention or change in the charter have to do with the state? It has nothing to do with the state. It has everything to do with the local government. And since it has to do with the local government, just like the municipal courts, this means Pueblo City should fight for it. All right, so Pueblo City gets the power to zone. Pueblo City gets the power to decide upon municipal courts. Zoning, Roosevelt v. City of Inglewood, 1971. City of Colorado Springs v. v. Smart, 1980. Then capital improvement construction. So we can build capital improvement. We can build better gyms, better hospitals, better you know schools. We can build schools. Uh, Davis v. City of Pueblo, 1965, Fort County Metropolitan Capital Improvement District, 1962, Berman v. Denver, 1965. So, election and recall. Let's just read all the things, and you see, you know, all the um, case law there, right? So, uh, we get, to, and here in the City of Pueblo, we get to control the municipal courts. We get to control the zoning. We get to control the capital improvement constructions. We get to control the election and the recall. Election and recall. That sounds up my alley. Laverty v. Straub, 1943, International Brotherhood of Police Officers, Local 127, Denver, 1974, Burzen v. The City of Boulder, 1974. But employment, uh, employee regulation, including municipal employee residency requirements. You must live in the city of Pueblo if you're going to work here. Theft of items under $300, that's the city's concern. We get to throw our shoplifters in Douglas County Jail if we want to. And public right-of-way franchises. Public right-of-way franchises. So, public right-of-way. So, they get to own them. They get to buy public right-of-way franchises. So, that would be, you know, your internet, your electric companies, your internet, your electric, your water. Any, you know, public right-of-way franchises, whatever could be uh, constituted to be in the public's interest. And then right-of-way, meaning we got to get the water to all the cities, so that's the right-of-way. And then that's it. I mean, that's the, at least the short little list that Jason still will, but at least it gives you some parameters to which to guide yourself about what is local versus what is state. So let's repeat these one more time. We get zoning. We get to control the land. Uh, Pueblo C does. We get to control the municipal court. Pueblo City does. We get to control the capital improvement construction projects. We get to control the election and the recall. Here, we get broad employee regulation, including municipal employee residency requirements, theft under items under $300, and then public right of way franchises. So, some of the bigger ones there petty theft, that's, you know, I guess they get to jail people with the petty theft. Public right of way franchises, that's major, right? You could take property, you could take um, shit for water, electric, internet. Then broad employee regulation that you get to regulate what kind of employees, you know, you must live here. Election and recall, that seems to be very important. I think municipal courts right up my alley, too. And in fact, capital improvement structures, I think the two biggest ones is the public right-of-way franchises and the capital improvement construction. And then the condemnation of public property. Condemnation. Somebody was just sitting there telling me that it would be, it would take years of red tape to get homeless people inside the buildings. I don't think the problem can wait. I think we need to fix it right now because if we don't fix it, then we're not going to have the political will. Who's going to have the political will in order to stop homelessness and poverty? Nobody's even talking about it. And so if you don't even put it on as an agenda item, as something that you want to, you know, uh, handle. So, yeah, okay, so that's important, right? Those are the local concerns, municipal court, zoning, capital improvement, construction, election, and recall. So, you know, there's several court cases there I want to take a look at. The International Brotherhood of Police Officers, Local 127 v. Denver, 1974. Burn, Burnson v. The City of Boulder, 1974. And Laverty v. Straub. Election and recall, and then municipal courts. I also think capital improvement, construction, they probably all, all these court cases would have their benefits, right? Um, if you can build capital improvement constructions, if I could build, you know, uh, I even heard that we once gave like $7 million. One of our city managers gave like a shit ton of money to, um, 
<laughs> some private corporation, the corporation came in, so we just give them seven million dollars to help build their fucking shit. So if we can help build the capital improvement structures of private corporations, which I think personally is unethical and should be illegal, uh, that should go to a vote. I mean, if we do we want a public gym or do we want to help, you know, uh, private fucking Walmart build a brand new housing for their fucking Walmart stores? Sometimes, you know, there's been private fucking capital. So not Walmart specifically, but I'm not for sure. But the, the, I'll have to get that information uh, later. But um, it was I think it was either Lou, uh, the city managers, the ones that was there the longest. So Lewis. Lewis something, and then um, Fred Wisebroad. Anyways, actually, I should write that down, right? So I need to let's see what was that? Uh, There's a city manager because he had like a surplus. He had like a twelve million dollar surplus, and then eleven million of it went to some corporation. So it'd be interesting to see where that corporation is at today. All right. So those are the courts have established. These are the areas of local concern for home rule municipalities. Now, here's statewide concerns because that's what the question is going to be. The parameters are going to be, is this a statewide thing? Is this a local thing? So in the statewide concerns, we have liquor regulation. Liquor regulation is the state. And all they're saying is that it's a statewide concern. So either that means there's a sharing of it or perhaps the state takes it over. But... um, Statewide concern doesn't mean that the home rule municipality doesn't have any authority. It just means that a state has a vested interest. Now you got to determine who's got a bigger interest, what percentage, and then, you know, kind of uh, iron out those details. But the liquor regulation by the Constitution, Article 22, utility charges and rates, which that's fascinating. Utility charges and rates, so electric electric and water that comes from the PUC PUC versus City of Durango Denver versus the PUC that seems I I would argue the utility charges saying what the fuck does the state have to deal with the utility charges like um, if we wanted to I don't know okay so these are state they got interest right certain other criminal acts felonies utility charges and rates and liquor regulation so that's that's quite fascinating felonies go to the state so big, you know, petty theft, three hundred dollars and left that goes to the city, but felonies that goes to the tenth judicial district. Certain other criminal acts, so other specific criminal acts, but the utility charges and rates is the one that gets me. Liquor regulation, you know, whatever. I don't know. Um, seems like that should be a shared thing. The city would have an interest in regulating the liquor, but they want to get all that fucking taxes. Additionally, there are restrictions posed on home rule municipalities' election initiative, referendum, and recall procedures to ensure reasonable exercise of home rule powers. So there's more restrictions on election, the initiative, referendum, and recall. So we already have restrictions here. So to gut out the fucking charter convention, this is insanity, I, I swear to God. Courts consider restrictions on vested property rights and publication requirements, statewide concerns. So, restrictions on vested property rights and publication requirements. So, interesting. You can't have restrictions on vested properties and publication concerns. So, you got to make sure you publish this stuff. And that's the state to make sure you're doing it fair. These provisions have not been challenged in court. When challenged, the courts may not support them as statewide concerns. Courts have held various state laws focusing on local issues. On local issues do not apply to home rule municipalities. In '96, the court held a statewide police training standard does not apply to home rule municipalities, as home rule municipalities have constitutional prerogative to control the appointment and qualification of its own officers pursuant to its own charter. So, home rule municipalities don't have to listen to the statewide police training standard but we, because we can have our own standard here. But if we don't have our own standard, then the statewide police training standard would, I think, uh, prevail. So, it all depends on how your own charter is written. Does your own charter give you the permission to have police training standards? If it does, then the city, Pueblo City's police training standards reign supreme over the state's. 
Three, Colorado's Supreme Court decisions exempted Colorado's home rule municipalities from the open meetings and open records requirements. So that's fucking crazy. What the fuck were they doing back then? Sunshine law should apply to everybody. That's actually one where the state should intervene. Yes, all government expenditures should be done, you know, publicly. But it's saying that they were exempted from open meetings and open records requirements. So the city doesn't have to have open meetings or open records requirements. So that's kind of a bad thing for a home rule municipality. And that's the Supreme Court. Why would the fuck would the Supreme Court say, yeah, the money that is spent on the public, uh, it could be secret. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Thus, open government at the local level in Colorado depends largely on the provisions in the home rule charters of the major cities and towns in the state. So, thus, open government at the local level. The provisions in the home rule charter. It all comes down to the provisions of the home rule charter. Here's another thing about home rule powers. The Colorado legislature expanded home rule powers by allowing the creation of metropolitan capital improvement districts. So I guess that's how they pay for the capital improvement projects. Make a capital improvement district and then give your private corporation buddies a bunch of money. So the Council of State Governments 1962 and 1982 case brought broad grants of authority into question. Community Communications v. City of Boulder 1982. Advisory Commission on Intergovernmental Relations 1985 widely reviewed the issue. So anyways... Um, yeah, they're creating metropolitan capital improvement districts, which we mentioned earlier. It does mention here that two significant areas, home rule authority has been reduced, annexation and finance. So home rule authority, they're not allowed to annex any new land and finance. And then, um, see, in 1974, Article 20, Section 1 was approved, stopping all annexations by Denver without approval by the county in which the land exists. So Denver wasn't allowed to annex any land unless they had approval by the county. In 1992, voters approved Article X, Section 20, Tabor, and it restricts the finances of all Colorado governments, home rule or otherwise. One important authority to review is home rule financial authority. The ability of local government to tax their own citizens ranks second in importance behind legislating to complete autonomy. As a means of solving metropolitan metropolitan revenue problems. So they're saying that legislating is the most important thing for city governments. Legislation, passing new laws, passing new municipal codes, and then complete autonomy. Right? So it says that it ranks second in importance behind it legislating to complete autonomy as a means of so that's Fascinating, right? Number one, responsibility, legislate. Number two, responsibility, tax. So number one, legislate. Number two, tax. The way I look at all politicians and government officials was there's two things. Um, governance, implementation. So it's, it's policy, implementation of that policy, and then the optics. Those are my three standards for how well a politician is doing. There's the actual governance, the implementation of the policies, the policies are the ideas, and then the, uh, how the ideas get implemented, whether or not they get implemented, and then the last thing, the optics, how good you look doing it. Are you going around making eulogies and giving speeches at graduation ceremonies, or what are you doing? You know, what are you, how are you, uh, how are you governing? Are you just an asshole who just kind of shows up to work and yells at everybody and then goes home and uh, cries, cries yourself to sleep? So, I guess I could, no, yeah, mm, let's go over it one more time. Statewide concerns, liquor regulation, utility charges and rates, felonies, certain other criminal acts, um, restrictions on vested property rights, and publication requirements are statewide concerns, even though they have not been challenged in court. And then local areas is zoning, municipal courts, capital improvement construction, election and recall, broad employee regulation, theft of items under $300, and public right-of-way franchises. Public right-of-way franchises, capital improvement construction, 
zoning and municipal courts are all safely 100% with